Around 15% of the world's coffee is grown here in Colombia, with an estimated 3 billion coffee trees supplying some of the world's finest coffee. But how do the seeds that are planted by the thousands of coffee farmers grow and produce the drink that is consumed so readily across the UK and the wider world? The coffee tree starts as a seed that the farmer plants in a nursery area. After six months, the small tree is transplanted into the field. It takes another two years before the tree will produce coffee. To grow well, the trees need a combination of sunshine and rainfall. The coffee bean starts off as a white flower, and wherever on a tree a flower grows, this eventually becomes a cherry. The cherry is small and green at first, but within about 32 to 36 weeks, it becomes large and red. It is now ready to be harvested. My family and I usually harvest the cherries, but when the crops are good, we call other farmers and they come over to help. We go for a couple of hours and then have breakfast at around 8 a.m. before spending the rest of the day collecting the cherries. Keeping the quality high is very important. I keep checking that we are collecting only the best cherries because this determines the price I will get and the final quality of the coffee. I only want to sell the best beans to fair trade. Each person can collect up to 120 kilos of cherries a day when the harvest is good, which results in about 25 kilos of coffee to be sold. Recently, the poor weather has badly affected crops, so we are able to harvest very little, about 15 kilos of cherries, making 3 kilos of beans from each person to sell. Coffee grows all year round in the right conditions, and there are usually two main harvests. The largest harvest comes in October through to December, and a small second harvest comes in April and May. This year, due to bad weather, we have been unable to harvest any coffee at all. The main harvest should have started weeks ago, but for the second year running, the crops are late and poor, so we are only just now beginning to pick cherries. A mature coffee tree can produce around one kilo of dry coffee every year in the right conditions. I have over 4,000 coffee trees on my farm. The coffee trees grow well with hot and dry seasons followed by rain periods, but for the last two years there has been no dry spell. The continuous rain has had a major impact on crops, and yields are about 17% less than they normally are. After harvesting, the coffee cherries are brought to the farm and to the beneficiadero. This is the machine that extracts the two coffee beans from each cherry and separates the pulp from the beans. The beans are sieved to remove debris and remain in pulp and left to ferment for 12 hours. Having been washed in the beneficiadero, the beans are then put in the sun to dry for three to five days before then being put into bags. Farmers have different types of dryers and my beans, up to 375 kilos at a time, are dried on the roof of my house. This has its own cover so that the coffee beans can dry even if it rains. Jose Manuel and the farmers of the cooperative take their dried coffee beans to be weighed and graded and to be rewarded for their hard work. The sleepy town of Aguadas, home of the cooperative, is awoken by the hustle and bustle of the farmers as they descend with their bags of coffee. Many arrive in the brightly colored buses called shivas with the coffee atop. Some travel in on horseback or by donkeys. The bags of coffee are weighed in at the cooperative. At this stage, the coffee is known as parchment coffee and the beans still have a skin which needs to be removed before roasting. A sample of the coffee is taken and analysed by an expert at the cooperative who determines the grade and quality. Quality is also tested in the lab where a sample is roasted and tasted. As the bags of parchment coffee are transported by conveyor to the hoppers, the farmer is issued a receipt showing the price he is to be paid and the weight of the coffee bags he has brought in, adjusted to take into account grade, and inclusion of parchment weight and impurities. 
The farmer collects his emptied bag and receipt and goes to the cooperative office to be paid. His coffee beans are rebagged into sacks ready to be sold on. Being part of a cooperative means that there is an intrinsic trust. Farmers know that they are being treated and paid fairly. The coffee from Aguadas is transported four hours by road to Colombia's fourth largest city, Medellin. Colcafe is Colombia's leading coffee producer, and it is here in the Colcafe factory that the coffee beans are processed. Colombia is rightly proud of its reputation for high quality coffee, and checks continue regularly for as long as the beans are at Colcafe. This starts with a quality inspection at the warehouse where the coffee is received in. From here, the process becomes highly technical and mechanized. The coffee beans are blended together and roasted in drums, and for the first time begin to take on a familiar look and aroma. From there, different processes of grinding and extraction are applied, depending on what finished product is required. For example, whether bagged coffee for the cafetiere, instant granules, or freeze-dried. Having gone through the appropriate process, the coffee is packed into the relevant consumer pack or larger boxes for export. The packs are loaded onto vehicles and make their way to the port. Col Cafe export to no less than 45 countries. The finished product is the familiar packet or jar on the shelves of your local cooperative store. This may be a long way from the mountains of Colombia, but the labor of love of the farmers the fascinating story of the journey of the coffee bean and the high-quality finished product are to be appreciated and savoured.